How much you had to drink? I'm good. Elijah McKnight says what happened to him during this 2019 arrest outside Aurora, Colorado, should never happen to anyone again. I was out cold for three days on life support, pretty much. McKnight admits he was drunk on the sidewalk when police arrived to check on him. He tells police there are warrants out for his arrest. All is calm until an officer attempts to cuff him. He resists and is cuffed and tased. But he says what happened when paramedics showed up nearly killed him. They were acting like I was just the incredible Hulk and that I was tossing them around. Paramedics initially determined he doesn't need to be hospitalized. He doesn't need to go to hospital. But then a police officer asks this. You guys can't give him anything, can you? Unless he goes. Unless he goes. Yeah, yeah, we, unless he goes we'll, we can give him ketamine and he'll be sleeping mm -hmm. like a baby, but we'll have to take him to go. Don't yeah. give me, yeah. don't yeah. inject anything in the mother. What do you want to try to get him? Oh, yeah, look. This will be a fight the whole way. Oh! No, I was We're going to the I hospital. mean, he's fucking the three of us. Just give it to him. That was a great report by CNN. Credit where it's due that I will link to in the description if you're watching on YouTube. So what you saw there... Uh, was the pandemics determining that that man, Elijah McKnight, did not need hospital treatment for being drunk. So he was drunk. He admits in this article to CNN that he was drunk and he passed out and they were inspecting him. But because he was being, I guess, a tiny bit aggressive when they were talking to him about being drunk and cops were dealing with him, they decided to drug him and hospitalize him anyway drug him with ketamine, which is used recreationally, is quite dangerous, but is a very powerful tranquilizer. So CNN reports that they first gave him a 500 milligram shot, then a second 250 milligram shot, which is definitely over the recommended dosage by the manufacturer and just by doctors. Uh, and this was not a one-off. They are doing this, injecting people with ketamine to subdue them even if they don't need to go to the hospital, to other people. I mean, and in Colorado, just 10 miles apart, according to the CNN article, another guy named Elijah also had this horrific experience. Elijah McKnight admits he was drunk. The 25-year-old says he'd had a fifth of Jim Beam with a buddy before passing out on his way home on a sidewalk just outside Aurora, Colorado. That is where sheriff's deputies found him. They nudged him awake and the conversation was calm for the first several minutes. Deputies told them they were just checking to see if he was all right. But the encounter ended with McKnight on life support after being injected with a high dose of a drug called ketamine. I was out cold for three days on life support, he said. My family didn't know where I was. When McKnight finally woke up in an Aurora hospital, he couldn't believe what he was seeing on the news. His eyes widened when he saw a story about another young black man named Elijah. Elijah McLean was in a coma and near death after a police encounter that also involved a ketamine injection, the same drug McKnight had been given before everything went dark. The two incidents happened just 10 miles apart and within days of each other, but involved different law enforcement and EMT agencies. I'm thankful to be alive, McKnight said, but he is convinced that the use of ketamine in police calls is being abused when there is no medical need for it. They are being lazy. I guess they didn't want to deal with a drunk a-hole, he said. McKnight is not alone in questioning whether police are influencing paramedics to use the powerful tranquilizer that requires hospitalization for non-medical reasons. CNN has found ongoing investigations in multiple states requiring emergency responders' use of the fast-acting drug to tranquilize people against their will. In some places, such as Colorado and Minneapolis, the use of the drug by paramedics rose sharply in recent years. Ketamine is often the strongest sedative in a paramedic's kit in departments that allow its use. In Colorado, where McKnight lives, the crews uh, need a waiver from the health department to use it. Doctors administer it for pain relief, and it can even be a general anesthetic. Between 2018 and 2019, there was a 72% increase in ketamine waivers for excited delirium issued by the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment. Some 902 waivers were made from 2018 to June 2020, even though the department guidance says the condition is rare and ketamine should not be considered the standard of care for the management of excited delirium or agitation. That increase in usage is alarming, said Dr. Mary Dale Peterson, president of the American Society of Anesthesiologists. 
It can be fatal, as we have seen in a couple of cases without proper monitoring and attention to detail. So that was a lot of information there. And one, I just want to point out, do you think they'd do this if it was a blonde teenage girl drunk on the side of the road? I mean, we've seen this, teenagers get drunk, they pass out, they don't know how to handle their, their liquor. This happens. Do you think that they'd, against her will, inject her with ketamine? I think not. These were two black men, so of course they do. They don't really care about their lives. We just wanna subdue them, get on with our day, doesn't matter if he's in the hospital, unconscious for days, whatever, who cares? And two, this is another reason to refund, defund, not refund, defund and restructure policing. Cops don't need to be going to these situations where people are just drunk, right? Social workers, people who are experienced in addiction and understand this kind of thing. Not even saying these guys are addicted to alcohol, they might have just had a bad night or whatever, but they are black in America, so they get the most extreme force used against them in every possible scenario.